Play of the game. Jack Jumper and <laughs> support them. Insects oh my are god. One of the most broken factions the game has ever seen. Nowhere else in nature will you find such an incredible concentration of abilities that are not only overpowered, but also extremely unique. It's tough to even know where to start when talking about what makes insects such a Oh my god, that's so pretty! Because in a lot of cases, it's not just that their individual and abilities back are empowered, but some of them feel like they should be mutually exclusive, since they're just insanely again. used in combination with one another. You'll see what I mean once and also I get the list, but first, a brief overview of the insect faction's general attributes oh. and history. Insects were added to the game during the early Carboniferous expansion. The devs bumped up the atmospheric oxygen level, which allowed members of the arthropod faction to adopt larger sizes and more costly abilities. And while most what of the, the arthropod heck? player base was trying to dominate the land by leveling up their size, oh! a small offshoot of the crustacean player base opted to forego the Pray slaughter trade, and instead used this oxygen bonus to oh unlock God, that's an ability so never before seen in game: flight. Because these new creatures Ew. were the very first to gain the ability to fly. The air became Insects entirely their domain. Can be so gross. Game, and would remain that way until reptiles unlock the ability several expansions later. Insects are extremely diverse in their abilities and stat spreads. In fact, they're so diverse that it's impossible to include them all in a single video. I'll be keeping things fairly generalized, but truth be told, many of the groups I'll be discussing today have so many standout members that they could easily be an entire tier list in and of themselves. They're so, so gross. Some of them are actions, cute, but, but a lot of them are gross. <laughs> Being members of the arthropod faction, all insects are granted the exoskeletal armor perk, which greatly raises their AC compared to soft-bodied builds. I have never sizes, seen a grasshopper so close. Being a massive reduction in those Ew. defensive stats for a short time uh, every time the player that looks up. like this makes insects jello. quite tanky on average, allowing them to excel in combat. The insect build also has what the fuck? compound eyes perk. Which Yo, those eyes look so cute and cool. Like scorpions and centipedes. With 360 degree vision, their ability to avoid obstacles, dodge attacks, and pursue targets while flying is far superior to most other flyers. This enhanced perception <laughs> perk is important because insects Yoink. tend to have naturally high stealth. So in order to compete with other insects, oh my builds, god, look at that! Is required. Like... We've only just scratched the surface of the insane abilities insects have access to, though. For a more in-depth look, damn. let's get into the tier list. At the bottom of the tier list, we have the silverfish. The silverfish is the most primitive insect build still in existence. It kind of blurs the line between what is and is not considered an insect, and not in a good way. All Unlike I know about silverfishes is their Minecraft. <laughs> the flight ability in favor of more and they're very annoying. The silverfish build actually never had access to it in the first place. <laughs> Aside from having an exoskeleton, that's legitimately have all I know. That make insects powerful. They do not have wings uh... and have essentially no combat abilities. They have fairly low defenses and get bodied left and right by pretty much everything, with their only useful stat being their decently high movement speed. Their special ability allows them to gain XP from eating cellulose and lignin, meaning they can farm XP from wooden structures, which normally don't grant any uh -huh. experience. This ability would be fairly powerful in forest biomes, but because they're such weak combatants, they tend to actually stick to urban Silverfish is real, I thought Minecraft made that up! <laughs> ...in the relative safety of houses, apartments, and office spaces. God damn. Even there, they aren't completely safe, though. Oh, and no. And while no build is ever truly safe in the insect meta, the silverfish's extreme lack of useful abilities places it firmly in F tier. Get ready. That's honestly the only insect build I believe deserves an F tier ranking. Most insects Poor are silver quite viable, fish. and even the less viable ones tend to have at least a few useful things going for them, even if those things aren't necessarily broken. First, a in walking tier, stick. We have what? Build, which includes walking sticks and leaf mimics. That's Those literally their name. Unquestionably, some of the most impressive camouflage abilities in the entire game. Second, only to I'm never picking up a stick in my life. Chameleon. As impressive <laughs> as they are, though, the question I constantly end up asking is, is this really necessary? What the fuck? Because Look at that! With the exception of insects, which that one looks exactly like a leaf! A systematic coloration strategy. Insects as a whole already have an above average oh. stealth and are usually able to maintain this while still specking into other equally impressive abilities. 
Their camouflage can only take them so far. While they're near undetectable while remaining motionless, walking sticks still need to move to find food. And while they Oof. do mimic the movement of a swaying leaf or branch, this certainly isn't perfect. In fact, if they're ever caught in an environment where camouflage doesn't match as well, their instincts to sway and move can actually end up giving their position away <laughs> even more, rather than aiding in their attempts to hide. Some phasmids do Stick possess chemical blood. defenses, but as we'll see further up the tier list, this uh. attack is quite mild compared to the heat some other insects are packing. Phasmids are they like peeing on them? Sloths, complete with all the major flaws this strategy is riddled with. Although at least phasmids don't completely forego all common sense and make a dangerous trek to the forest floor once a week just to poop. Next in D tier, we have the Lepidopterans, Aww. the faction which includes moths, butterflies, and skippers. At first glance, these may seem like absolute bottom tier builds. They're among the most vulnerable builds in the game when it comes to combat, with extremely yeah, their squishy wings are like very and squishy. utterly abysmal offensive abilities. Many of the larval forms of these builds are 100% defenseless and have a mobility stat in the single digits, literally the freest kills in the game. However, the Lepid player base is quite crafty and has come up with a few ways of at least sort of mitigating their many weaknesses. Caterpillars mm. and adult Lepids alike can adopt quite convincing disguises, some designed to help them blend in. What the heck? That's intimidate. so blendy! Granted, these strategies often don't hold up against high intelligence builds, but it does help. Some caterpillars spec into quite potent defenses, like spines and toxins. What the heck? This one has so many spines! Take on. And credit that where credit was, is due, ant was even like... they still are fairly defenseless, I will. butterflies and moths <laughs> do have excellent mobility, and can fly much greater distances than most insect builds. This enables them to avoid high conflict areas of the map, and reach <laughs> oh, higher quality loot that might be so too rare for most players to rely on. Their massive wings, in addition to being highly customizable <laughs> oh, for a variety of stealth and oh, intimidation damn. purposes, look at also that just moth. make them look much larger than insects of comparable body sizes, which helps dissuade attacks. But ultimately, Lepids still take plenty of L's, and most high-tier insect builds have quite oppressive magic. The bats like, hello! So definitely a below-average faction. That's actually Just, it for that D tier, was so and cool. I know it might seem like we're moving up the tier list quickly, but again, insects are a massively successful faction, and are going to be concentrated in the higher tiers. Oh the no! Tier, oh, be our bank chaff! I'm survivor. I have some things to do until this is done. <laughs> and a multitude of elemental resistances in lieu of any Fuck cockroaches. While they don't pack much heat, their they're disgusting. They can easily wedge themselves into locations that are extremely <laughs> difficult for other players to attack them in. They're rather clumsy flyers, but they do have <laughs> If we suffer, you suffer movies. with us. Not and fair. They will scurry to cover if they see a predator player approaching. However, when caught out in the open or backed into a corner, they're fairly helpless and easily one of the most vulnerable builds in the entire insect faction. Ew. They're also somewhat carried by human mates, making temperate and tundra servers viable for them. Because really, as impressive as their toxin and radiation resistance abilities are, they're quite vulnerable to the cold and would still be mostly confined to jungle servers if not for humans unlocking what the fire and ability. What the heck? The biggest parents may be able to one or two hits, but even then, with no way to fight back, they're still pretty screwed if they Blip. fail to outright escape a fight. Next in Not the no earwigs! A fearsome looking generalist build. My parents scared the shit out of me with them! Animals on its rear end, called Cersei. As fearsome as these Cersei forceps are, <laughs> if you actually check the earwig's Fuck. base stats, we quickly notice Gross. that, just like all of its other stats, its power stat is actually quite mediocre. As menacing as uh, yeah, 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 stop showing and crawling and scared! And can even be deflected by the most basic of armor. And even oh. against builds without armor, the damage is so low that larger builds still don't really need to be wary of approaching an earwig <laughs> and can attack with Bad animation. Still, just because they can doesn't mean they do, as the earwig's intimidation factor alone is oftentimes enough to protect it from conflict. And credit where credit is due, the forceps are actually fairly decent in matchups against soft-bodied insects, and allow the earwig to carry their targets much better what the than they fuck? could with their jaws. Holding it with a and tail and eating with the other one? Rear-facing weapons instead of the more typical forward-facing ones like mandibles and rostrums. The position does actually serve a purpose, in that it allows earwigs far greater access to burrows and tight spaces, where they like can our ears. And avoid conflict altogether. <laughs> all the weapons insects have access to, Cersei might be some of the most unorthodox, 
which probably contributes to its ability to intimidate God other damn. players. However, I think to get out of mid tier, I'm intimidated already. Have the ability to back up their threat display. They would do well to spec into some sort of venom. Venom infused stings are a fairly oh, common Oh, come on. For insects, so this no. feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. So, while certainly a viable mid tier, don't overestimate this build's abilities. Who At wants to be a earwig player? Doctors, including grasshoppers, crickets, and katydids. These are the first mobility centric builds on our list. While they're quite capable flyers, their true power comes from their saltatorial hind legs rather than their wings. Flight is an excellent defensive ability, as it allows the user to get out of reach of an attack's range. But Are they body blocking with their wings? Their ability to get airborne has too much startup <gasps> power, and so instead of uh. using their wings to get themselves up into the air, a powerful jump enables the Arthopteran mains to escape vertically at instant speed. Their excellent vision makes it extremely difficult to get within striking range without alerting them. And because their jump has such excellent frame data, landing an ambush strike on an Orthopteran can feel near impossible at times. Oh? Oh! And even if a player does manage to secure a grab, their powerful hind legs can function as quite an effective combo break. Oh! The spines on their legs augments the damage their kicks can deal. Holy moly, those spines! The first few hits of an ambush attack, they may be able to turn the tide of a confrontation and escape after dealing serious damage to the attacker. With that said, I think there are a few flaws in their Wait. strategy which I think keeps them out of the upper tiers. Grasshoppers can jump so far that there's really no way of knowing what sort of situation they're about to put themselves in. Wait. In a similar manner to the flying fish, using such a drastic escape option can sometimes end up putting you in a worse position than you were before. Especially if your local meta has a lot of spider players, and although they do present Blech. a challenge, most predator players aren't disrupted by the grasshopper's kicks, and can either tank the damage outright or one-hit the grasshopper before it even has a chance to retaliate. At the bottom of True the tier, bugs. we have the hemipterans. A so the, order the of others insects, are fake with a bugs. Few things in common, including generally having high defense and being somewhat shield-shaped. However, and those like the stinky bugs, rather than slicing or pinching mouth parts. The Hemiptera build opts for a piercing rostrum, perfect for puncturing through tough surfaces. I recognize so those. Builds, you don't fight those. Them to farm you run. Sources that are normally hard to access, <laughs> well, you, you like take the them outside because they stink. Trees and stems, or the starch inside of seeds. Oh. However, there are some Hemipterans which use their sharp rostrum to deliver a venomous bite that is able to pierce through armored targets. Their venom is powerful enough to one-shot just about any other insect, and can even deal severe damage to larger builds. The only major shortcoming here is that these so-called assassin bugs tend to actually have fairly low stealth, opting for the aposomatic intimidation defense I mentioned earlier. And on top of all that, they have fairly low mobility. Actually <laughs> ambushing another player kind of difficult if they're actually paying uh, attention to simply dodge the attacks and flee. So oh, do break this try to clean and opt for both better camouflage and high aquatic mobility making them some of the most fearsome aquatic God birds damn. in the game. On the herbivore side of things, Hemipterans tend to fare a bit worse. They usually still have fairly low mobility and low stealth, and their defenses may be higher than the average, but are nowhere near as impenetrable as some of the builds higher on this list. They tend to rely on a chemical defense similar to some phasmids, which is where they get the name stink bugs from. However, yeah, similar to phasmids, see, these I recognize them. tend to be a bit lacking, and often fail to deter attackers. So certainly they deter me <laughs> members and fine for XP farming, but still nothing too broken. <sighs> Lace wings. Off B tier, we have the Neuroptera. A Ooh, they look cool. With some pretty pathetic looking base stats. Genuinely one of the least agile flyers in the entire game. The However, wings are the final look form cool. of this build paints a highly misleading picture of its capabilities. The larval form, which is the form they spend the vast, vast majority of their time as, is a brutally effective uh. predator build for any player who prefers the camping playstyle. Taking a look at the larva's stats, we see that they have incredibly high power and stealth for their size. Antlions have a devastating, venomous bite, which they use to one-shot unsuspecting players before draining all their life points with their hollow jaws. Because of their ability to construct pitfall traps, their passive stealth rating is extremely high, making their ambush playstyle unbelievably effective. As if escape wasn't hard enough, once the prey gets caught in their trap, the antlion even has the ability to launch projectiles to stun its target, Whoa. making escape a near impossibility. I have an entire video dedicated to the That's overpowered so abilities of the larvae, but in short, they are what the earwig pretends to be. 
if you took the earwig Circe, put them in front, and made them sharper and gave them deadly venom to boot, you'd have an antlion. So why the weak adult form? Having spent all their evolution points optimizing their larval form, they spend hardly any time at all as adults. They don't even have the ability to eat in mm. this form, and really only exist to be a vessel that allows players yeah, to find each other and complete the mating questline. Yeah, this channel is like incredible for like information in, their much in a fun way, Genzi. So while I do think it'd be more impressive if they didn't take such a massive cut to their power level during their final level up, there's no denying that for the vast majority of their playtime, these builds are an absolute menace to encounter. Oh, At here's the, the mantis! Here a personal favorite of mine, the mantis. Boing! Mantises have a fairly straightforward playstyle consisting of slashing and grabbing their targets Boing! using powerful spiked raptorial form. You're mine! If we take a look at the mantis' stats, we see that the mantis <laughs> has one of the highest base power stats of any non-venomous insect. It also has a stealth stat similar to that of a walking stick, which it what the heck? needs in order to be able to get within striking range Look at that! Targets. Look its at that! Its clumsy flight and slow ground movement speed makes chasing prey basically impossible. However, what they lack in movement speed, they easily make up for with strike speed. The mantis's strike <laughs> is lightning quick, to the point that it's easily able to hit targets that are normally considered hopelessly evasive. As powerful as these strikes are, one weakness of the strategy is that the grappling attack doesn't immobilize the <laughs> and actually brings them within range of the counter attack. This thing bug and was while like. The mantis's large <laughs> size enables it to tank I fired him. Attacking a venomous target can end up being a serious <laughs> blunder for a mantis player. So definitely a powerful high tier predator, but not one that's so invincible that mantis mains can get careless. The poison. Next in A tier we have the flies. This oh shit! A bit confusing Seriously? With the amount of other builds that use the word fly in their name, but this group, the true flies, are defined by a very specific feature. True flies only have two wings. This might seem like a major trade-off. But while it does leave them more vulnerable to having their flight ability disabled from taking damage, the perk they unlock in return is more than worth the risk. Instead of a second pair of wings, flies swap them out for haltiers, a sensory structure that grants flies an insanely powerful buff to their aerial maneuverability and their evasion. Their superior aerobatics make them oh. all but impossible to land a hit on midair, and also <laughs> enables predator fly variants such as the robber fly to launch frog. incredibly precise attacks mid-flight and take down targets that would normally be too powerful to confront head on but are unable to It's funny because flight. However, we value flies, flies uh, like or parasites using their pretty low, right? Superior reactions. We're more scared of the other ones. defenses and avoid the sweeping counterattacks of larger players. It's kind of funny to see them on the tier list lifespan, very high. There's no denying that they make the most of the time they do have and are one of the most efficient and evasive builds in the entire game. But while flies are excellent aerial combatants, they are no match for the ultimate aerial hunter build. Dragonfly. The dragonfly is similar to the crocodile Ooh. in that it is one of the most well-optimized PvP builds that has ever existed in the game. It's already such an efficient build that across several balance patches and game expansions, the dragonfly has seen very few changes. I actually to never strategy. have flies in my they house. Aren't necessary. As the dragonfly is but I guess my cat's kind of like deterring you from wanting to come so in. So what is it about the dragonfly that has given it such a competitive edge? Dragonflies have the best aerial maneuverability of any build in the game, and the highest top flight speed of any insect. Unlike most insects, dragonflies have specced into the ability ah. to move their wings independently of each other, which grants them the ability to move in any direction without needing to turn and face What the, the hell? Ground, that's meaning that that's OP! Flight and even fly backwards. This ability makes their flight more energetically demanding than it is for other insects. So this is a high commitment, high reward playstyle. In order to ensure a proper payoff for their incredible agility, dragonflies have also specced into what is arguably the best vision of any arthropod. Extremely large, high resolution eyes that take up basically their Damn. entire head, granting them full 360 degree vision. This allows That's them to crazy. track all potential targets around them with ease, and allows them to see attacks coming long before they're actually at risk of getting hit. Unlike many of the other builds on this list, which either have a powerful larval form but a weak adult form, or a powerful adult form that can only achieve this after enduring an extremely vulnerable No, like they, their eyes the are all around. Is a high tier Excellent. predator in both forms. While everyone knows they dominate the skies when they reach their max level, what you might not know is that as nymphs, dragonflies are one of the most vicious aquatic builds in the game, able to one-shot similarly sized fish and amphibian players. 
Now, while it was tempting to put dragonflies in S tier, they do have a few shortcomings. While they are generally able to see approaching predators before it's too late, they aren't particularly good at avoiding accidentally flying into dangerous situations. Oh. They are easily trapped by spiderwebs and are often snatched out of the air when flying too close to another player. In addition, dragonflies cannot walk, meaning that their energy expensive flight ability is their only option if they need to reposition themselves. Not that devastating of a weakness, but it's enough that this ancient build can't quite break into S tier. The First in beetle. S -tier, we have the beetle. The beetle is the epitome of the insect build. A bunch of extraordinarily powerful band. abilities that seem like they OP. shouldn't really function properly when used in conjunction with each other, yet somehow actually end up synergizing unbelievably well. Beetles are the premier tanks of the insect faction, with an outer cuticle sturdy enough to deflect just about any attack with ease. It has such a high AC that it can confidently plow through a swarm of aggressive ants without God taking damn, any look damage. Look at that armor. Something that even many reptiles and amphibians can't get away with. Now, typically, when a build is heavily invested into defenses like this, it it's has to like make a, a lot of sacrifices. We're watching an insect tier list. This is the opposite of what we see in the beetle build, as in addition to being the most heavily armored insect in the game, it also excels in several. They have other so metrics. much armor. The most Holy moly! Of which is its power stat. Beetles can obliterate their enemies in combat using powerful jaws and explosive chemical weapons. Their ability to bulldoze What do you mean explosive chemical weapon? Overstate. But in my opinion, their real damage so potential comes from beetles which possess the ability to blast <laughs> the their attackers with a toxic or acidic chemical burst. Why is it more stops because although you'd probably expect a high power tank to be a slow oh. lumbering build, Beetles also possess the top terrestrial movement speed of any insect. And if that weren't enough, despite often having heavy horns or giant mandibles, Beetles were your phobia, really? Being clad in heavy armor and strapped with enough muscle to move objects what far the hell? above their weight class, the beetle is still able to fly without much issue. Now, they did sacrifice one of their sets of wings for additional armor, so they can't perform the advanced aerobatics that dragonflies and houseflies can. But the ability to get from point A to point B via flight is still extremely valuable, both for escaping danger and for reaching valuable points of interest. In short, beetles True. have essentially every ability they could ask for. They are an amalgamation of everything that makes the insect faction so powerful. And so it's Oi. no surprise that beetle species comprise a whopping 25% of all species in the game. Holy They're so moly. versatile and adaptable that a beetle player can find a niche in essentially any server. They truly are the ultimate insect and deserve a tier list of their own. As incredible as this combination of powerful abilities is, ultimately the beetle is still lacking the most powerful insect ability of them all, eusociality. Now I have an entire video dedicated to explaining just how broken this ability is, and there's no question that the insects that incorporate it into their game plan simply uh. dominate all in their path. Now, termites, termites oh God. are a variant of the cockroach. Terrifying. Bird, but they have such a unique and powerful playstyle that lumping them in with mid-tier cockroaches seems disingenuous. The termite queen is the longest lived oh insect. Oh God! In the Look with at a that. Span near that of a human or elephant. Isn't she beautiful, Chad? The queen in her own right. Powerful armies the game has ever seen. <laughs> These Keep that away from me. Are able to construct some of the most well-fortified bases in the game. <laughs> she fake. Giving even beaver dams and human skyscrapers a run for their money. And not uh. only do they build incredible bases, but termites literally transform the map in order to better optimize their colony's ability to gather resources. They will Dude, pave termite? And build ramps and bridges to important resource deposits. Termites are this crazy and they're them to build a stuff. huge army and command vast territories. Termites, despite being most closely related to cockroaches, have a combat style that is actually most similar to the spitting cobra, which if you've seen my snake tier list, you'd know is also a top tier build. Termites can accurately fire acid from a needle-like horn on their face, dealing heavy damage to anything caught in its blast. Some termites opt for giant slicing jaws instead of acid sprayers on their head, and are crucial for defending their face from an onslaught of invaders. I'm termites just like, what the heck? With crazy powerful forward-facing weaponry, but extremely vulnerable abdomens with no armor at all. This means that oftentimes, despite a larger size, they are quickly overwhelmed if they get outnumbered and flanked. Not usually an issue, as termites are proficient at defending in a phalanx formation, which covers the weak points of individual members. So certainly, it's not kind of cool that they adapted the that. Status of 
but this weakness does mean that I yeah, like termites are scary. Other you social insect faction. Hymenoptera is the group of insects oh, heck that yeah. ants, bees, Let's and go. wasps. Unlike termites, these insects ants are a bees. bit more well-rounded, having decent armor all over, and tend to have both forward the and rear The Macedonians of weapon, the insect world. Most <laughs> That's an interesting way of seeing it. Stinger. The wasps' signature buzz and yellow banding are so infamous that almost every other insect faction in the game has at least a few members trying to replicate it to gain advantage. That's on really weird, Aleka, because you should have gotten that. I think extremely complicated coming in here without the use of tools, they can launch organized attacks containing thousands That's so fortunate. of fortunate. They can capture prisoners, cross major barriers, and control territory to an absolutely incredible degree. Thousands of players will lay down their lives in defense of a colony if need be. Ants in particular are masters of both empire building and military tactics, often having to wage war on multiple fronts while undertaking large construction and agricultural projects in their own territory. Ants are really so, cool, while but may also take like a larger percentage of total insect variants. Crazy how termites and ants yeah. vastly outnumber any other insect. Building. Like they're crazy and how many of them there are. Purely off of population, there's no denying that the abundance of these insects is due to their incredible Termite queens live up to 50 years. With a thousand eggs a day laid. Holy In fact, shit. the only genuine threats to you social players tend to be invaders disguising themselves as members of their own colony. What the hell? That spider is so. Many spiders that spider is so still. Adopt the strategy and are incredibly successful in doing so. As the ant troops forage and browse unknown territory, the parasites weave their way into their ranks. That was the video.